The political incumbents on your ballot are still supposed to be doing their day jobs as they campaign, you know, and if, if they weren't, we'd light them up, right? So take the governor. This is the day, November 1st, when the governor is required to release his proposed budget for the coming year. Democratic Governor Jared Polis did that today. Policy Sky Marshall Zellinger looks at how the governor's budget priorities line up with his campaign promises. Crime, fentanyl, cost of living, topics that have dominated the governor's race. So as Democratic Governor Jared Polis unveils his budget for next year, should he remain governor, is he putting our money where his mouth is? Let's start with crime. His budget proposal calls for state lawmakers to approve $35 million in public safety money, $12.5 million for auto theft prevention. The National Insurance Crime Bureau ranks Colorado as number one in auto theft and the Denver metro area as number two. And Republicans are using those stats to recommend voters make a change at governor. Polis said today his funding to combat auto theft was not asked for in previous years. We would be supporting 10 prosecutors that focus on auto theft across judicial districts in our state. This is not something they requested two or three years ago. It's something that meets the need today. On the topic of fentanyl, he's requesting two and a half million for two special units in the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to handle novel crimes, including fentanyl. Fentanyl, however, is not novel. It's not new. When asked about that, Polis instead pointed out the three million he's seeking to better the technology to determine if drugs contain fentanyl. We're upgrading the state toxicology lab to more rapid processing of um, results, including whether substances contain fentanyl. On cost of living, his budget does not further delay the two cent per gallon gas fee that will start in April. It was supposed to start this summer, but was delayed because of the election, I mean inflation. His budget also does not delay the statewide 10 cent bag fee that begins in January. He said state lawmakers can decide if they want to consider delaying any future fees. We are very open to any and all fee relief uh, that the legislature is willing to consider, and we have have some time in the legislative session to uh, to look into that as that continues through April. There was no money set aside for a new sound system. Uh, uh, it's interesting that the governor has to do their budget on November 1st because an election will always happen after that date. If there's a change at governor, there's a process to amend the budget. Even Polis himself could amend his budget in January when the legislature meets for the first time. And in Colorado, voters get more of a say than we do in other states because we could pass ballot measures that could change the amount of money the state brings in. Yeah, uh, Pro uh, Proposition 121, which I talked about yesterday, that could lower the state income tax. Proposition 123 could say, here's how you have to spend some of that money. There are things that could alter how the state spends. And the governor said today, even if everything passes, my budget is firm because we're in Tabor refund territory. So it's only going to reduce your Tabor refund. It's only when we're not in Tabor refund territory where the state would have to cut things. And he says if a recession happens, which is likely that that's when you worry about it, but that could be after he's out of office, perhaps. I know there's a little mistake in your story there where you went to say, uh, you went to say election and you said inflation. You should have gone back and fixed that. That was an error there. <laughs> Thank you, Marshall.